We all know the problem. We have many USB sticks with different Linux systems on it and I regularly have to search through my USB sticks which one is my correct ISO. And yeah, some USB sticks are about 16 gigabytes big, but ISO files are only about 2 gigs. Or let's see, the Debian net install ISO is about 400 megabytes big. So that's a lot wasted space on a USB stick. Wouldn't it be great if we could place more ISO files on our USB stick and can decide on start of the USB stick which ISO file we want to boot. We will do this in this video. Keep on. Welcome all of you. For this we are using the software Ventoy. It is completely open source. You can find this project on GitHub. I will link you the website in the video description. And if we head over to downloads, we can easily download the linux.tar.gz. Then we head over to a releases website of GitHub and here we can see our tar.gz. I download I download it. It is only a few megabytes big. Let's just see our checksum here. We have 2F9 in the front and 83B in the back. Let's check that out. I open my downloads folder and open a terminal here and just type in SHA256 sum and then our file here. I press enter and here we see in the end our 2F9 and 38B in the end. So that's fine. Just let's close the terminal for a moment and yeah, normally I would just extract that file here, but that archive isn't well built it because if we open it, we have a folder in here which is only called dot and dot also specifies the current directory on Unix systems. So uh, we just head into this folder and drag and drop our Ventoy folder in here to our downloads folder. Then uh, we open it up and just let's open a terminal. And uh, yeah, we need to start our Ventoy web.sh because uh, yeah, it's a web script. We will open this uh, one through our web browser. So I just type in dot slash Ventoy web.sh and we press enter. Okay, we have to run that as sudo. I will do this. Let's type in our password and here we see our address. It's basically our local host and then after that a special port. I open that up in my web browser and here we have our interface. It's very simple. Here we have to select our device. So in this case you have to put your USB stick into the PC. The bigger the USB stick is as more ISO files you can store on it. In my case for my demonstration 4 gigs are enough. Everything I have to do is to just press the install button in here. Here comes a warning. So all data will be lost on your device. So be sure that all data on that USB stick is obsolete and just press OK. So uh, now it's flashing the USB stick. There was our confirmation and uh, yeah, <laughs> that was the magic behind it. And uh, yeah, we can just press Ctrl C in our terminal and just close it. And if we look to the side in here, we have a new device called Ventoy. I just open it up and you see it's very, very blank because that's the space where our ISO files should be copied in. So yeah, just let's do this. I press F3 for our to list mode in here. I select this side here and just head over to my downloads folder and just copy the both ISO files into this 
into this folder here. Just let's reboot our system and let's check if it works correctly. So here I have booted my USB stick and we have booted up our Ventoy. It's just a simple grab menu. In here we find the both files, we paste it in here in the last moment. Just let's boot something and I press enter. Here we have our grab from Linux Mint. I press start Linux Mint and yeah, it should boot up correctly. And yeah, here we are on our Linux Mint. We could now install Linux Mint on this machine or <laughs> yeah, every other Linux distribution we paste it to our USB stick. That's great. The only issue I had on my host system was I have two screens and Linux Mint didn't had any problems before. Also a normal flashed USB stick. It didn't had any bugs before, but uh, yeah, the mouse handling was very, very weird. I was clicking on this screen here something and I saw the click on the other screen. That was very, very weird. But after plugging out the cable to one of the screens, Linux Mint worked fine. Yeah, I just could install that. And after that, that issue didn't happen again. There could be differences between that vent toy and a normal flashed USB stick. But for the moment, I didn't find any other issues. So that was it for today. If this video helped you, please give a like on it and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching and be free. Bye.